This week on Maker Update, a robot with a staring problem, the end of Maker Media, holding rainbows, a robot dating simulator, Da Vinci machines, a pie movie tracker, and surface mount soldering with sand. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. It has been a hot and sweaty week for me here in California, but I hope the weather is great wherever you are. I have a lot of projects and news to cover, so let's get started with the project of the week. Check out how Anna Linton made this motion tracking head using an Arduino, a stepper motor, an ultrasonic distance sensor, two servos, and some laser cut hardboard. The project reminds me of one of the first examples of a motion tracking robot called Albert, designed in 1968. You'll still see it sometimes on display at the Exploratorium in San Francisco. And while the underlying concept is similar, Anna's design goes a step further by adding expressions to the eyes using cardboard eyelids mounted on servos inside the head. I also like the chunky laser cut look of the face. Anna pulled this off by first designing a mask in Fusion 360 and then exporting it using the free slicer add-on that creates templates of laser cut pieces that you can cut out and glue up to create 3D shapes. There's also some really creative use of 3D printed and laser cut gears, PVC pipe, bearings, and a lot of other things that make this guide worth looking through. Now for some news, it's been a huge bummer for fans of Make Magazine and Maker Fair to learn that the parent company for both, Maker Media, has laid off all of its staff and closed its doors. TechCrunch was one of the first to report on it and in a conversation with CEO and founder Dale Doherty, they learned that he's currently working to keep the website servers running for the online magazine archive and to find a way to keep both the magazine and the Maker Fair licensing program running. There's a lot of ongoing coverage about the closure and what it means, and it's pretty clear that this may be the end of Make Magazine and Maker Media's role in producing the flagship Maker Fairs in San Francisco and in New York. But I think it's important to point out that the hundreds of independently produced Maker Fairs throughout the world, most of the Maker Fairs, are in no danger of closing down. All of us owe Maker Media a debt of gratitude, but we also owe it to them to keep the Maker movement going and growing and strong, so don't let the news get you down. Now back to more projects. Fellow Maker Media alum Becky Stern has a new guide out on making this 3D printed prism holder. Prisms are awesome, but without a way to fixture them, they just kind of turn into another desk toy. So with this fixture design, you have a way to permanently capture and redirect rainbows across your room and give your selfies an extra rainbow touch. Becky breaks down how she created the design in Tinkercad and her guide and her video on it are great as always. For one of the more hilarious projects I've seen recently, check out Robot Slow Dance by Dietrich Squinkerfer. It's a take on Rock'em Sock'em robots, but instead of fighting, the two robots engage in romantic robotic dating conversation. The two joysticks move the servo-based robots around while a hilarious MP3 file of the robot conversation plays in the background over speakers. So, how do you like um, stuff? What do you have positive feelings? The words in life. This is one of those projects that's purely entertaining, but I'd love to show it off when friends come over. I also really enjoyed these two 3D printed Da Vinci inspired motion machines from Greg Zemwalt. These are motorized with a small gear motor to give the illusion of perpetual motion. Concave channels in each of the arms allow you to place individual ball bearings that glide or swing around as the machine starts working. It's a cool trick and I think it's neat that Greg explored it with different designs. Gorkum Boskert has this awesome Raspberry Pi based project. It's designed like a movie clapboard but has a thermal printer on the front that prints out little show posters and descriptions for movies that are coming to your local theater. The clapboard is 3D printed and includes space for the Raspberry Pi and two magnets on the inside that make it possible to magnetically attach two of the most promising movie printouts on the front. It's a fun idea and great execution. Now for some tips and tools to share. On Tested, Sean Charlesworth has a video going over the best tools for tapping and repairing screw threads, as well as how to read imperial and metric sizes. There's a ton of great tips in here. Sean Hodgins has an instructable up on how he made his own custom project breakout board he calls Wind. It's compatible with all Adafruit feather style boards, so extra pump points awarded for Sean's Wind Beneath My Wings naming scheme here. The big payoff for using this board is that you can easily prototype projects by pushing wire or components into the little matrix of headers, and you have a dedicated spot for an 18650 LiPo battery. Sean includes the PCB files and bill of materials for making your own. 
On the Cool Tools channel, I've got an interview with Mike Warren, Mikeosaurus on Instructables, talking about his favorite metal cutting wheels for rotary tools. If you've been disappointed by the little flimsy abrasive wheels that come with your Dremel, this will change the game. On Hackaday, there's a great tip by Brian McAvoy on how to recycle plastic lids to melt over your project components and keep them protected. Lewin Day has a tip for soldering surface mount components using an induction cooktop and a pan of sand to create an even heat. It's kind of crazy, but it looks so cool when all the components magically sizzle on the board. I was also happy to find these 3D printed NeoPixel ring holders by Matt Mardigan on Thingiverse. Rings like these have become increasingly inexpensive and easier to come by. The problem is always finding a way to mount them. Not only do these solve the problem, but they include spaces in the back for passing wires through. Another quick useful print is this print in place hinged hand crank design from the Ruiz brothers that pushes right onto a rotary encoder shaft. Knobs are so 2018, the future is tiny hand cranks. And in issue number five of Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, he goes over easy electroplating, an Adam Savage tip for dialing in paint color, cleaning corroded battery holders, and more. And finally, for this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out the new four-part series from Sean Himmel on how to take your Arduino project and turn it into a product that you can sell. He goes over how to optimize your project to maximize power efficiency, streamlining the code, and eliminating the Arduino altogether, replacing it with just the microprocessor and the minimum necessary hardware. It's not a series for beginners, but if you're serious about taking your Arduino project and maximizing its potential and profitability as a product you can sell, then Sean's free advice here is a great resource. And that does it for this week's show. I am drenched in sweat right now, but please think about subscribing to this channel and giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment is also very helpful and fun for me to hear back from you guys. You can also get on the Maker Update email newsletter to get show notes emailed out to you automatically each week with a few bonus projects thrown in. A huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for sponsoring this show. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.